Okay, so I have absolutely no idea how long this video is going to go, um, hence the reasoning for putting it on the other channel, because I know it's going to be over 15 minutes. I'll try to timestamp it if the structure is good for that, so you can go into the description box and click on the part you want to go to. And I have a lot to, uh, that I want to say on this matter. I, I don't know how. I'll try to keep it as logically structured as I, as I can, but it's off the top of my head, and depending on what I've written down in notes uh, going back on the you know, the history of it all we'll see uh, so but like I said it's all off the top of my head so I can't uh, I don't know how it's gonna go we'll see all right uh, it's always difficult to know where to start off with these things because there's so much involved I think I want to start off with the mentioning about the drama thing people often refer to this as drama and what's the point you know and all this and that but I think that as long as there's something of value that can be uh, pulled out of it or thought of or discussed over uh, that it's not really drama as long as there's still something of of substance that can be talked about and I th this has that now one of the things I wanted to talk about in regards to what I see is value in this and there's much else that can be talked about I won't of course address everything but uh, everybody's taking their own little angle on it and that's fine that's good but speaking as a masculist and I know you may not like that term and that's okay yeah I, you don't have to accept it. I apply that term to myself now. As a masculist, I still believe we live in this time, and we probably always will, uh, where the man is assumed as demon. Men are demonized, in, a, in our culture especially. Women are often assumed innocent victims, and that's how it's seen. That's the zeitgeist of it. And I'll talk more about that later, but what I want to show you here is sort of a little snapshot of that from this show on True TV called World's Dumbest. This happens to be World's Dumbest Brawlers 2. And this is a clip from uh, of a man and woman fighting. What I want to do here is first count the assaults throughout the video on the man and the assaults on the woman. So I'm going to play it. You're not really going to be able to hear it. It's not necessarily to hear it anyways. So there's the first assault. We'll just go mark that right down there. I've edited out some of the things that they added in the commentary. There's the second assault. It's like a slab to the head and then she grabs the hair and or hand, hair and ear and starts dragging him around. It's the second assault. She asked to fight. Third assault right there. Uh, moving on. Fifth or fourth assault, sorry. Here comes the assault on the woman. Goes to the ground. Second assault on a woman, he steps on her right there. Kitchen. Fifth assault on a man. I kept her commentary in for a reason. I'll get to that in a moment. Six assault on the man. Seventh assault. Okay. All right, so we got seven assaults on the man, two assaults on the woman. And I think this scene right here just says it all. I think it really just says it all, what I'm really trying to get to here, right? You got one man making sure the other man doesn't hit a woman or hit a lady. While at the same time, she's slamming his head into the cement there with her leg. Just slamming in her, his face with her foot into the fucking cement grinding it in 
while this man is preventing him from defending himself <laughs> at the same time saying hitting a lady ain't right there's something wrong with this folks you understand that there's something wrong with this scene so on top of that we have some other elements right while the woman is assaulting the man and I believe she could have assaulted him much worse before anybody would have stepped in see nobody came to the rushing rescue of anybody or to break up anything until once the woman was assaulted that's another element another element was that you couldn't hear the uh, you couldn't hear the the commentary and the s sounds of the the people who took this video uh, it was all fun and games until she got hit until she was hit then it became serious that's another element another element was was that it was time to call the police now see it wasn't time to call the police when he was getting smacked around no 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 that's he can handle it right yeah. but as soon as she gets smacked a little bit oh it's time to call the police now one of the commentators from the show she states that I, I like how this Superman guy whatever he says she says about the guy who comes rushing the white knight that comes rushing to the woman's rescue to make sure that she's allowed to assault the man freely um, she says about him that it's nice that he only cares about 10% of the time well she got that wrong there it what's wrong is that he only cares when a woman's getting smacked he doesn't give a shit otherwise that's the problem here now you may be saying oh well geez it's a man I mean obviously he could do more damage when with a hit than than she can and it, it, there's something to be said for that that's true and and normally when we look at uh, at least the experience that I've you know the experiences that I have witnessed and been involved with and such normally when there's fights if it's like between two two guys it's kind of yeah, allowed to let go, you know, allowed to happen. Uh, no one's really calling the cops. But if all of a sudden one of them grabs a, a knife or a gun or something like that, then yeah, people are calling the cops. You know, once they see it starts going to the next level. So that may, that may be one of your arguments here. But did, did you really see that there? Really? I didn't see that there. Not in this instance anyway. You know, and I want to remind my viewers, if you pay attention to the laws... And the feminists in this country are pushing more and more for mandatory arrests in all states, in all instances. Mandatory arrests, mandatory sentencing, stricter sentencing of all these types of things. Start going and reading about this shit and you'll see what I'm talking about. I mean, I can do more videos on it and I will later. But I want to continue on with uh, this Onision stuff too. I'm getting too wrapped up in this thing. Oh, and let's not forget, eventually it will turn just like uh, the Swedish model where uh, the woman, and it already has in a lot of uh, all the battered women's syndrome, stuff like that. Uh, and there's some truth to that. I'm not completely denying that, but it's often, it's often abused, and I've seen it abused myself um, by women using the uh, advantage of the state and the force of the state to her advantage. Not uncommon. I would say, at least in my experience. If you want to do some scientific stuff, you'll have to do that. But for now, understand that eventually it'll turn into, well, the woman's a victim, even though she was hit. So obviously the mandatory arrest must be applied to the man, even though he may have been assaulted as well, as we see here in this video. Because, I mean, she's a victim of the patriarchy, you understand? Okay, enough of that. Um, little rant there. You may be asking, well, what's the point of this video? Well, I see the same thing happening in this Onision situation. By the videos I see being uploaded by folks, and by commentary I see. Now, how do I know this? Well, if you've taken any time at all to look into the situation, you can see that Onision... It started off with a video on uh, Onision uploaded on January 8th, 
12. <laughs> well, I hate to inform you. The situation goes back to August of 2011. Okay, so there's a lot of history there. But that didn't matter to people. They took up the banner of the White Knight, and the woman is a obviously a woman they have they have know nothing about. This, I mean, look, I mean, you just look at this ad objectively, right? This this woman could be a you know a murderer for all you know, but no, she's an obviously a innocent victim, right? She's she's well, she's a woman. <laughs> we'll get more into that too. But that's one general theme I see, I see playing out uh, throughout this, and I think that this video here is a nice, nice small little package to illuminate that, uh, that into. Now, of course, some people will confuse this dissent with a defense of that reprehensible man, Onision, and believe me, I find his character quite reprehensible. Deserving of... Uh, jail time, prison, having his nuts cut off, whatever you want to, whatever hyperbolic rhetoric you want to throw in there. Oh, I don't think so, but that could be discussed. All right, and I'll comment on that stuff as I go along, but let's go through some of the timelines, some of the stuff I've looked at so far, and there's a lot to look at, folks. But we'll just try to run through this as quickly as possible. Right? From what I understand, uh, in mid to late August 2011, this girl named Adrian and Onision make personal online contact. Now, two videos I think you should go look at from Onision are one is called The Girls I Avoid. All the links will be left in the low bar, by the way. And the second one is called Rebound Relationships. Keeping in mind that these videos were made in August 30th, August 30th, 2011 and September 1st, respectively. Now, it's real, it's, I find this real quaint that he talks about this stuff at this period of his life, because it's all going to come back at the end here. What does he say in The Girls I Avoid? Well, he tell, talks about exactly what he doesn't want in a girl, right? He says, one that drinks, one that smells, one that hates my videos, one that is inconsiderate of my emotions, and, here's a good one too, you all recognize this one, uh, had sex with a ridiculous amount of people. He describes as uh, if you're like 25 and had sex with 30 people, or if you something to the effect of if you've had sex with more people than your age. That stuff should all sound familiar. This is all the stuff he says before he even announces that he has a new girlfriend. Right? <laughs> and then he talks about rebound relationships and just funny how he talks about these things that he's not going to do and he does this very same this very same stuff he's broadcasting to his audience his intentions exactly what he's going to do which reminds me folks that a, of another element of this whole thing that people bring up is that so much of this could be just completely made up I mean you don't know this girl she could be a murderer she could be just a play acting to help boost his numbers and getting paid for that right so this whole element of a completely a, com a complete facade have being perpetrated onto the YouTube community for you know is for his for his bank is is not completely out of the realm here and here we have people jumping to her defense oh she's a woman of course so even if it's made up you know but we could still run with it anyways because we'll still get something out of this there so I think that's interesting if you go look at those videos. Uh, all right, so uh, September 3rd then, a couple days later, that's when he uploads his video called I Found Her, uh, where he announces that he's going out with this, this Adrian girl. <laughs> the next day, he uploads another video called I Got Dumped, <laughs> which speaks to the nature of the, the behaviors of these folks. Right, this constant. This, what I, I, I mean, I can't even describe their behavior. They're very odd people to me. But hey, to each their own, I guess. Now the weekend. Now that was September fourth, right? Now the weekend of September 9th, two thousand eleven. Onision and Adrian meet, have sex, and decide they would move in together. Also on September 9th, if you look at Adrian's uh, post on her Google Plus, 
on September 9th, you can see that she uploads a video by Mariah Carey called Touch My Body. Or she says, it is ridiculous how appropriate this is right now. And some of the lyrics are, <laughs> are this. If there's a camera up in here, then I'd best not catch this flick on YouTube. <laughs> because if you run your mouth or if you run your mouth and brag about this secret rendezvous, I will hunt you down cuz they be all up in my business like a windy interview. <laughs> but this is private between you and I. Yes, how appropriate. She forecast all this. Now speaking of which uh, when he's talking about the sexual history Right, that was something that was emphasized that he put forth the sexual stigma of a woman's sexual history. Well, he uploaded a video on September 15th called Sexual History Problems, in which he says it doesn't matter um, who or how many or whatever you slept with before. What matters is now and from there on, right? He's very inconsistent in his, well, he's inconsistent in everything, but. Okay, so let's move on. Now, September 19th, 2011, on Adrian's Google Plus page, she posts something strange. I don't understand it. She says, there is a multitude of ways in which I could respond, and she talks about something. But in respond to what, I don't know. She doesn't say. I might assume correctly that she's responding to a video called The Endless Cycle, uploaded by Onision on September 19th as well. But let's move on and we'll see if we can verify that a bit. Now on September 20th she goes on to write a very long post that starts off by saying you know I was going to be respectful and quiet about everything smile, nod, and move on but when it's implied that I'm some kind of STD riddled disgruntled stalker that's when I feel the need to step in and salvage my name. Now, I don't know exactly what she's talking about there. I am only assuming, I'm going off my own little investigation here, that it's between the two vi two videos uploaded by Onision. One called the, that I, the aforementioned video, The Endless Cycle, and a second video uploaded on September 20th as well, called Drama, 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 also uploaded by Onision. Now, this is that letter, and now this is what really begins it for me. Now as far as I understand, what she was doing was not happening on YouTube. She has a YouTube channel, but there are no videos that I'm aware of that she's made ever talking about this stuff. And I also want to mention that I go, you know, I go in between both having, um, you know, empathy for her and then losing it, then gaining it, and losing it again the more I read on <laughs> and, and we'll discuss that as time goes on but let's let's look what happened now we have to ask ourselves some important questions here if I'm right in that it was those two videos that he made that prompted her making this on her Google Plus page then we have to look at those two videos and say is she justified then for doing what she's doing here because now we're upping the level so to speak in the drama, right? Where m she's the one that seems to first really be going into these details that people are so criticizing Onision on. Now she's taking it to that level. Now that's something that can be argued. One of the important things that she says in here is one of the the whole main thrust of all this is that she is a victim. That she it's like she's has no control. You just look at the language. So one of the things she says, I wasn't the one who looked at someone in the eye and asked them to have their babies and got offended when they say no, said no, but still gladly came inside them. Right, that just the dick just fell on you and the, the, the cum just came in there, right? <laughs> Several times. I wasn't the one who insisted we had sex less than an hour after we met. Quite the contrary. I kept pulling away from you stopping you. Now, we mix in this because there's a whole talk about who's bringing up rape uh, and this and that. Well, when you play the victim throughout this and you add in the sexual element, what's the impression people are going to get? 
I mean, they definitely got the oppression of victim. I mean, we could just look at the language, right? I'm sorry you had experienced that. Uh, not forcing people to do things they aren't comfortable with and are very extreme. His videos have gotten a little creepy. It's as if uh, the stalker button was inserted into his skull. The side of the story made me think of what happened to past couples. Right, and here comes the force of this, the force of that, and there's the sex element involved up in there. I'm so very sorry to hear that he did all this to you. I'm sorry he put you through this shit. I'm so sorry this happened to you. And on and on it goes. I didn't know he would do things like that. I'm so sorry you had to go through all this. Right, and it just goes on and on. So we've definitely established that everything happened to her. The victim status is in place, solidly, in people's minds. However, there was only one person that mentioned rape. And that comes right here. Accusing someone of forcing sex, you are saying he raped you. So, to be sure, it wasn't like you look at the bulk of the, uh, of the comments and, you know, people didn't get the impression of rape. But it doesn't take much, as you see. Now, she responds, Rape and feeling peer pressured are two differently and entirely different things. This is really upsetting me that some people think I am throwing rape accusations around. And what makes me kind of ponder about that is why she would say that, why would she would phrase it like that? Was somebody else saying it somewhere else that I'm not aware of? I don't know. Regardless, we know that some people are getting this impression, but she tries to rectify it, so okay, good. Yeah, so one thing I want to say about that is that some people are saying, well, it was Onision bringing up the rape stuff here in January. No, no, this goes back to September. You could see people were talking about rape long before Onision said anything. And it was because of her words, not his words. That's one point. The second, the main point being, is there a, an asymmetry here? A who said what first? You look at his two videos that I'm aware of that I think that this is what she's responding to with. And does what he's saying in those two videos justify what she's done here? You understand? So read that and tell me what you think. If you are truly an objective person, a true skeptic, right? And also when you do that, go back to his videos. Go watch the next one uploaded on the 21st called you never loved me right and some of the videos even after that and see how he handles it right because there's definitely a difference back then to what we saw here in january and that's something that should be shown and taken into consideration right he he's not m mentioning he's not mentioning her name or leaving links or going into details or any of that shit you know, but he's mentioning the fact that someone's saying stuff about me over here and over there, and it's, you know, my ex and things like this. Okay. Uh, he also wrote on his Facebook on September 20th that I hear one of my exes is attacking me pretty hard right now. I hope you will stop hating me. I certainly am not mad at you. And on September 22nd, he uploads a video in response to it all called Closure. On September 22nd, okay? Links to all this in the, in the below bar. I suggest you watch them. That's when he starts going into more detail. I wouldn't even say that he really ramped it up more then. But that could be argued as well. Now this is where it starts really getting freaky. By September 22nd, 2011, Adrian contacts Onision's ex-girlfriend, Shiloh. Shiloh posts a blog going into details. It's titled pushed to the edge, later deleted but caught by people paying attention to this sort of thing. Now, the two girls, Adrian and Shiloh, supposedly, if you look at the video too, that was me, sort of supposedly like, you know, became like great friends in all this, just bonded with their experiences with uh, Onision, right? They bonded strongly as sisters. By September 25th, Shiloh backstabs Adrian to get back with Onision. Watch the video titled Shiloh's Best Friend, Adrian, uploaded by, oh god, what is that? Do, uh, don't stand <laughs> so close to me, okay. 
That was uploaded on October 2nd, 2011. And Onision, he, he does try to maintain a level of privacy. I mean, I don't know why. I mean, every, all this shit is public information. Everybody knows who the fuck you're talking about. And he does something really disgusting. If you watch that video that I just mentioned, uh, just some really disgusting shit with that talking through talking through metaphor about this Adrian, which m disgusts me. You know, talking about this woman this way. What the fuck are you doing, man? But we have to ask: Is he justified? What was she doing with this ex-girlfriend and posting this on these blogs and saying about him publicly? Psst, well, that could be argued. I'm just saying. Now, boom, we get to the letter. On October 15th, 2011, there was a letter that everybody who's probably read about this has read. It was a letter written by Adrian to a concerned party involved in this that wasn't getting the story straight, so she wrote this long letter. And somehow it got leaked on Onision's website, I believe. He has a website and he has a, a form up forum where you can post shit and the le the letter was linked uh, put on there <laughs> of course it was quickly removed uh, but people caught it anyways I believe and there's some uh, some commentary you can see about it on there uh, all the links to that you'll see from another site called Onision oh no wait what is it it's Onision drama whatever the hell it is so what we see there is a truly ramping up of the details and things of that nature and the slamming of this man's character. Um, it just happenstance that it came after the fact that <laughs> Shiloh backstabbed Adrian and this and that. And a couple of videos that are pertinent to that pertinent to that, that you should watch is called uploaded by Onision on October 16th called Protecting Loved Ones. And a second one called Six Years Versus Three Weeks. Now that essentially ends like what I would call like phase one. Right? You got a lot of history there. There's a lot of stuff I didn't even mention in that timeline. Uh, there's all this, all kinds of little mini dramas and side dramas mixed in with all that stuff. What, I, what I'm really trying to stress here though is that of who, who said what first. When, who was ramping up what, what, when. Things of that nature. So we can get a, a fuller and complete context, right? A fuller and complete details of the context of the situation so we can better inform our opinions on the matter. So this is when we move into our second phase. We start with the video that he uploaded January 8th, A Horrible Rebound, and a second one he uploaded, uploaded January 11th called Sleeping Around. This is when I started picking up on the videos people were making that I'm sub to or and such and commenting on and I started hearing about this one of the ones that really really kind of you know, well that uh, upset me to see that someone was well who normally goes into such great detail and depth into their videos was was Jordan Owen uh, Jordan Owen 42 someone who I've, I've watched for some time you know, it goes into great depth and detail with argumentation regarding, like, Gail Dines and such. And to see him handle this with such, uh, I don't know how to explain it, with just not even looking at the details, really, was uh, a shock to see, to say the least. I mean, he uploaded this video on January 13th, and Onision had uploaded a couple of other videos after the... A horrible rebound and sleeping around one called he uh, before after and during and anti-rape activists accused of rape uh, two videos of which Jordan didn't even mention which I think were very important to the situation not to mention uh, all the months of shit that happened prior to that that video a horrible rebound so and this sort of theme played out with other videos and other comments it's like they don't even know the girl and they don't care to know uh, they don't even care to, to look at the, I mean, just take a step back and look at this type of behavior of these folks. <laughs> you don't see something odd going on here? <laughs> but you're all ready to play that role of, right, male is demon, woman is victim. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Jesus Christ. That's one of my main gripes. That's one of my main dissents, you see. And somehow that's seen as a defense of Onision. No. No, no, no. Sorry, no. 
No, it wasn't to say, though, that I disagreed with everything that Jordan was saying in his video. No, that's not necessarily what I'm saying. It's, I agree with some of what he said. I also agree with a lot of what Divinity has had, has had to say on it. I even was a, agreeing with Cryptic Queen. Up until the point where you start to realize, well, wait a minute here, what's, what's going on here, folks? What, what am I missing? <laughs> Right, you start to see, wait a minute, it starts to look a little more like a witch hunt than legitimate dissent. But they do have, obviously, legitimate gripes, and that's the stuff we can talk about. But it got so warped so quickly <laughs> that, yeah, that we can start talking about the some of the more dissent I have. But this was my main dissent, you see. Now, in my opinion, in the end here, uh, this is not the end of the video, just the end of the Onisian stuff, mostly. I, I could talk about it more, but what I'm... In the, my final, close to final analysis, is, is that they're all fucked up. All right, these people are fucked up. Putting that much fucking, on all their parts, putting that much personal detail out in the world, I mean, it's just it's, it's disgusting, right? And, no, you look at the result... We don't. We still don't know how much truth there is to really any of this. Uh, as far as we know, they can. A lot of this can be really just be play acting uh, for for the bank of YouTube. I think initially, I think what you know, Adrian should have taken her own advice and and not stay quiet, but I think she should have answered directly and stayed within the realm of what he was saying in those couple of videos that was she was, she was responding to in the beginning there, instead of going into all this other stuff. Um, so I see her as and that and one of the another video going into my other theme of my descent of the zeitgeist of white knighting and n don't hit a lady that sort of stuff there's a video here by Paul Chartley I believe Chartley I don't know how to say the last name uh, titled Goodbye Onision and I dissent on that video as well Let's see what I say here. I said that that video is a good example of the zeitgeist of demonizing males. As a matter of fact, this whole situation has illuminated it, illuminated it quite well. Most people that I've seen speak out on this do so with a presumed innocence of the female, and she is hardly ever mentioned except to invoke em empathy and or insist assist in <laughs> further demonization. God, you can't even read my own comment. She is the victim, he is the victimizer. And keep in mind, people are doing this, are doing so without familiarizing themselves with as much detail as they ought to. No, he's a man, so it must be. I mean, the video is a perfect example of it. A call for violence, as often follows in the situation towards the male, that must be done. You know, you see it all over the place that he ought to be raped, put in prison, all kinds of stuff. And he even continues it. Onision has created. Onision has created. Uh, what about the other girls? Right? They, they're they often talked about as, like, just some back actors, some support, not even supporting roles. They're just not even in the scene. <laughs> Man, Shane knows what's going on. <laughs> How would I bring up the other elements of this, right? The, the new girl, Adrian, was well aware of how Onision performs in a very personal nature regarding relationships in a public fashion, i.e. YouTube. All right, she's completely aware of that. And she's admitted, you know, I, and like I said, I, I go back and forth with falling for more empathy with her and losing empathy for her. Uh, you know, because she, she mentions that she takes, look, she takes full responsibility for everything that's happened, okay, understand? She mentions, she talks like that, so it's not like completely manipulative here, but she does plenty of manipulative stuff at the same time, so that's how I start to lose everything for her. Anyways, uh, she was aware of the Shiloh situation, and three, she also played a public role in speaking about him from the beginning of their nasty little breakup. Let's not forget that this is what, and she mentions that too. Let's not forget that I was a girl in a breakup with a boy and this and that. Okay, yeah, she gets it. <laughs> I hope you get it too, people. Uh, I mentioned that, you know, Nissan, right, may very, very well be, say, or do things that I find re reprehensible. It doesn't give me license, misspelled, uh, to follow that up with the typical white knighting we see here. <laughs> he responds with, I refer to the girl in question as a groupie. 
Okay, but the main thrust of your video was quite the other way. <laughs> but okay, I'll take back the white knighting part, but still I think it plays into that that whole role, okay? So, you know, I, I think she's done some good things. I think she's handled some things in a good way, but she's also handled things in a bad way. And I say the same thing for Anissia. I think he's handled some things that I find absolutely disgusting what he's said and done. But he's also handled some things in a good way. And that's how I see the situation. I mean, she hasn't, as far as I know, just it's everything that it seems to be contained mainly on her Google Plus site. And then there was some stuff on uh, Shiloh's web uh, blog post or whatever. Other than that, I don't know what else she does. If there's anything else out there on somewhere else, I don't know. Like I said, on her YouTube page, there's, there's nothing there to even bother with this situation. I think, you know, in my uh, advice to her, I would think, like I said before, that she should deal directly with what he said. Like, if she did that from the beginning, just deal with directly what he said instead of adding all the unnecessary stuff that ramped it up, ramped it up to the next level. Uh, I think that would have been uh, worked very well in her favor. But she didn't go that route. And other than that, I, I, she's, from what I understand, she's pretty much done what she said, where she's just not uh, talking about it, right? So ever since then, ever since, like, the letter stuff. There's been, been a little bit, but nothing much to add to the this and that, the he said, she said stuff. Most of what Onision was responding to since then has been to the critics of YouTube. That's what he, who he's responding to. All right, so let's move here to what I said to uh, the Cryptic Queen, AKA Ruby Dynamite. This was her video called Anissia and Eagles Fucked. So what I said, I believe it is wrong. Now keep in mind everything I just said in my video, okay? I, I believe it is wrong that one employs the all too easy accessible stigma of slut in the court of public opinion. But the all too easy and accessible stigma of male as demon is also just as wrong, which is precisely what she does in her video. You seem all too willing to call this man a rapist based on very little information, but I guess that's acceptable in today's society, just as it is for society to accept the stigma of the slut. Never, not to mention all you know all the months of other stuff that went on that you could you know may, maybe you want to take a look at first. Huh? Now, what does she do? What does she do with that comment? Well, she replies to it. I see that I get this reply in my box from her. If you're seriously trying to take up for this piece of crap, you can get the fuck off my channel and not come back. Okay, well, again, people are mistaking my dissent for a defense, and I was going to go back and say something like that, only to find that my comment was removed and I was blocked. Quite a shitty move, I must say. <laughs> I mean, the last person that did that to me was was a mendum. <laughs> I mean, this is a woman who's criticized Onision on his practices with his comment section. Yet we're gonna send off a reply and block you so you can't reply. Okay. <laughs> Cute. Love it. Oh, and then on top of that, remove the dissent from the video. Okay. <laughs> Now, one of the other elements of my descent that mixes in with this stuff with the cryptic queen was something that I was expressing here to Boo Boo in Different Sky. What I'm alluding to here is when Shredder lives on and says she wasn't raped, or quotes her as saying she wasn't raped. I was reminded of that one documentary, I'm sure you all remember it, with those feminists over there in Sweden, uh, that one group called uh, Rocks, whatever it was, with that documentary, with the... You know, with the feminists that are just all too willing to tell the women how they feel, right? So that's what a, one of the elements that I was picking up on reading comments and watching these videos, especially the one by the cryptic queen. Tim as a rapist, when then people are, I think that's also part of the reason why a feminist whore made her video saying, no, that it was him that brought that element in. And then one of you girls mentioned somewhere on one of your videos saying that, it was him that brought up rape first. Well, I just showed you obviously not. Rape was brought up from the beginning. 
<laughs> and it was due to her words, not his. And what I was trying to get across here was that the legitimate gripe, the legitimate gripes and complaints and the talk about the, the slut shaming and that stuff, all that stuff that I was agreeing with has now been lost. That message that you're all trying to get out there to that, it all got muffled over by all this rape talk. You understand? Now, Indifference Guy tried to argue with me on that, and I quoted the Cryptic Queen. I could have quoted more, right? Saying, you know, I was getting the impression from the Cryptic Queen that she was hoping that Adrian was listening to her video so she can convince her that it's in her best interest to go to the police. Right? So if I was that girl, I would press charges against you. Do not pass go, do not collect $200, go straight to jail. Because you said something about a girl, you should go to jail. Now I know, it's because of what she describes as the pressured, well, what she describes it as a rape. She says if it was her, she would think it was a rape. So, okay. The point I'm trying to make here is that any of the other message, though, is lost because of that. You understand? Now what does she try to say here, just like in her re most recent video? She tried to say, I told you exactly what, why your comment got you blocked and removed, by the way. Because you were, just like you are here, trying to defend someone, no, I'm not, who pressured someone into having sex with them, no, I'm not. See, I never got a chance to say any anything in, in my defense, right? So, you see, Cryptic Queen, you assigned to me my position, removed my comment that blocked me based off of that position. So you say something, uh, something interesting things in this video. Some of it I agree with, uh, some of it I don't. I mean, you put, you, one of the things I find that you say in this video, you say that you feel lucky, that it, it's, you're just, you're lucky that, like, you just escaped out of, you just barely scraped by uh, getting sexually assaulted. Thank God that never happened to you. Well, I don't look at it that way. I look at that, I look at it this way. The women that that has happened to, they have been ex very, extremely unfortunate that that has happened to them. But you see, it's actually normal for people to not have that happen to. It's not a matter of luck, it's just a matter of that's that the actual nature of people to not molest, to not rape. But of course, if you live in the feminist world, you know, men are a rapist, right? They're just they're, they're the demon, so they have to be. So that's why you're just able to scrape by through life as a woman and not get sexually assaulted. <laughs> so we're putting forth that Zeitgeist, we're strengthening the, that stigma of the male. Now you make it seem that I've been going around saying this stuff about you. I left one comment on one video that I already showed. That was it. That's all I said about it. Until this video. I mean, some of this is just, uh, I find outrageous when you talk about rape. She was letting him off easy. Yeah, after she fucked him? That's when she let him off easy? I mean, come on, folks. Jesus Christ. And it's a good thing people like this are not judges <laughs> or writing law. Now, I'm not saying this girl doesn't have a right to take anything she likes to to court. That's the wonderful thing about our society and our judicial system. You have a right to take to anybody to court for anything. And you ought to use that. Uh, you should never, uh, never fear using the legal system. And not, not to hurt someone, mind you, but if you ever feel that there's been an injustice done to you, that's exactly what our courts are for, folks, for you to go there and have that settled. Um, either that or we go back to <laughs> might makes right and uh, bringing out the see you at noon with the, with the gun sort of stuff. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, you all do realize that he, if that happened, that this this pig, as you call it, this dehumanization tactic, I love that. I love that tactic y'all use. Right? It's a pig. That's called dehumanization. It's rhetoric. It has a purpose. It's sort of like how we get our soldiers to kill other people by using specific rhetoric of the enemy to dehumanize them so it makes it easier to kill them. You understand but you do understand that someone would be actually defending him unlike me I just don't don't uh, confuse again I'll keep reiterating this don't confuse my dissent 
with a defense, but he would get an actual real life defense trying to get him off in every degree if there was an actual rape, we say. Now, speaking of rape, when we talk about the rape definitions, it was recently changed, right, for the collection of information from the FBI regarding sexual assault. Why is that a win for feminists? Uh, I've been trying to figure that out. Someone said, well, so it'll drive up the numbers so they can make the numbers look bigger than the actuality in, in real life. Now they can say that one out of every woman is raped every day of their life uh, for all eternity, as long as we live in the patriarchy. Yeah. <laughs> but I went and looked at a few other states, just five. I didn't, wasn't going to do them all. Alabama, uh, it's called rape in the first degree. When a person commits the crime of rape in the first degree, if he or she engages in sexual intercourse with a member of the opposite sex by forcible compulsion, or he or she engages in sexual intercourse with a member of the opposite sex who is incapable of consent by reason of being physically helpless or mentally incapacitated, or he or she being 16 year Okay, we'll just leave that for a moment right now. Well, I find it interesting that they include the he or she, right, instead of uh, when a man injects his penis into a vagina forcibly, that's rape. But everything else is not right. <laughs> However, they do something very odd here. What do they do? With a member of the opposite sex. How odd. <laughs> I guess homosexuals can't be raped. Hmm. Interesting. Alabama. Alaska. Let's see, they call it uh, sexual assault in the first degree. There's other degrees, of course, but they just call it sexual assault. Couldn't find a definition of rape. Maybe somebody else will find it. But anyways, a, an offender. I like that. Offender. That terminology. Commits the crime of sexual assault in the first degree. If the offender engages in sexual penetration, I have somewhat of a problem with that. But we could talk about that later. Uh, with another person without... See, I like the way they phrase that. With another person without consent of that person. Of course, we also have the problem of Without consent, they define consent, too. So they go on to some depth there. Arizona. Sexual assault. Uh, classification increased punishment. Oh, that's right. A person commits sexual assault by intentionally or knowingly engaging in sexual intercourse or oral sexual contact with any person without consent of such person. Arkansas defines it as rape. A person commits rape if he or she engages in sexual intercourse or deviant sexual activity with another person by forcible compulsion who is incapable of consent because he or she is physically helpless, mentally defective, or mentally incapacitated. California goes in depth with their code. I mean, this is just some of it. This <laughs> is not even all of it. They separate it into spousal rape, and uh, then they separate it first with a person, uh, let's see, not the spouse. That's how they put it. Rape is an act of sexual intercourse accomplished with a person not the spouse of the perpetrator under any of these circumstances. And then they have another section just like that with the spouse but then they I uh, didn't do a comparison like if they compare or like what was taken out or what was added in but I'll leave a link to that you can see how much in depth they go to they talk about consent and prosecutions under these sections in which consent is at issue consent shall be defined to mean positive cooperation an act or attitude pursuant to an exercise of free will oh boy <laughs> the person must act freely and voluntarily and have knowledge of the nature of the act or transaction involved a current or previous dating or marital relationship shall not be sufficient to constitute consent where consent is at issue in prosecution under those sections nothing in this section shall affect the Ba, 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 ba. Okay. 
Right. So if you're getting raped, just because if the the victim asks the uh, rapist to use a condom or something, that obviously does not constitute consent. Lots of these different issues you can get into with all this consent stuff. So you see, this issue has brought out a lot of, you can, there's a lot of different angles you could talk about. Uh, so much of this has been of what had to be discussed, like I said, I think really distracts from some good issues that were being discussed, and it could still be, uh, regarding the slut shaming and all that, and there's other stuff we could talk about. And you, you, you are, of course, free to dissent, um, but I do appreciate you know, expression of that dissent. The why. Why do you dissent? What what exactly are you arguing with in a in a negative fashion, right? I always like to hear that stuff. That's welcome here. Alright. Oh, so I am so tired of talking about this stuff right now that I'll have to save it for another time. Anything more that we have to say about this. So peace out, my brothers, sisters, and everyone in between. <laughs>